mighty phantoms of the evening sky. To whom do these celestial steeds belong? When you appear to us like gods on high, what brings you here to mystify? Hi, welcome to the Kate Valentine UFO Show on 1160 WVNJ. Our guest today is Dr. Stephen Cox. He is here to discuss his books, Military Response to UFO Activity. As with all our other guests, Dr. Cox has chosen several incidents that prove beyond any reasonable doubt that UFOs do exist. What UFOs are is a different story. But Stephen Cox brings up another intriguing aspect to this puzzle, and that is, as his book title says, what is the military response to this phenomenon? Does the military even acknowledge it? And why all these big secrets? His background is quite impressive. He is a former federal law enforcement officer with the United States Coast Guard. He is an ordained minister. He served in the United States Navy and is a Vietnam veteran. He has had his own sightings and investigated many more that are experienced by others. He is an investigator for the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON, and currently is the chief investigator for the New York MUFON organization. So welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, I tell you, I was reading your book, and it was pretty phenomenal. And I have to, if you don't mind, start with a quote, because I think it has not been said often enough. And here's your quote. It has not been difficult to make a compelling case for the reality of UFOs. The evidence is clear and overwhelming regarding this subject. The challenge is to make clear the reason for secrecy in relationship to UFOs. But the greatest challenge is explaining the why. And as I emailed you, I think your chapter 20 is my favorite in all of, of your book. And that was Understanding UFO Secrecy. And uh, why, why, uh, you know, why did you think there was all this secrecy surrounding this? Um, a lot of it has to do with mass hysteria and stuff. The uh, only thing I can keep going back to is back in the 30s when they did the radio show uh, War of the Worlds. And the outcome of that had on the public, the military would feel that this kind of a, uh, example would happen in the real life. Right, but I, I think, you know, uh, a lot of that has been done away with through uh, over the years with uh, various films. And uh, I, I think the population is generally speaking getting a little bit more accustomed to the idea of there being intelligent beings elsewhere. And I believe that 100%. Military, unfortunately, they don't uh, believe things like that, and they don't. They're using this opportunity of the UFOs to be able to experiment with their, you know, black op projects, their uh, secret aircraft. This way, if anything comes up, they just say it's a UFO. Yeah, that well, that certainly is one of the reasons, that's for certain. Um, but uh, they also, you mentioned that there, uh, as a lot of other investigators have felt, that there may be an unacknowledged government within the government. And uh, certainly Edgar Mitchell, one of the former astronauts, feels that. Yeah, just, um, I believe it was Jimmy Carter that tried to get a lot of that information out to the public when he was president. And they just came back at him. The head of CIA told him it's it's on the need to know, and being president of the United States does not give you the need to know. (laughs) And um, really frustrated the president that they can't do this, but there are uh, governments that are actually higher than the president of the United States. Yeah, and and I guess that... uh if the president can't find out who that is, I suppose we as uh, UFO investigators will not ever be privy to that information either. Um, the way it sounds, no, but hopefully we can get enough pressure into Washington to have them start releasing some files. Um, it's worked with other governments, and hopefully we can get the United States to fall in line. Well, you know, Len Kasten was on a while ago, and he is a historian as well as a UFO buff, and uh, he said that this whole thing of a government within a government started in 1947 with the Roswell crash and with the government's need to cover that up, 
And that sort of started a whole paradigm as to uh, how to cover things up, how to keep things secret, how to, uh, with Magic 12, how to separate yourself from the powers that be. And I think it gave them a lot of tools to start something like that up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I was just, <laughs> I was just saying that uh, that uh, certainly this whole UFO has at its root uh, something of secrecy, and uh, that it all started back in '47. With the UFO, yes, the government uh, cover-ups and stuff has gone on way before that World War Two, World War One. But when it comes to the UFOs, it started about 1947. Uh, big one was with the crash of uh, Roswell in. And and they, uh, then there's still talk, you know, uh, there's the old saying, if there's enough smoke, there should be fire. And they still talk about back engineering from that crash. And uh, had had you uh, uncovered anything as a uh, UFO investigator? I've tried to uncover more information, but pretty much everything I came up with is still what everybody else has come up with. It, um, a lot of that uh, back engineering I haven't been able to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, but the signs are there. Well, it, it is sort of odd that uh, this technological burst all occurred after 47, and then, you know, you always had that hint of Eisenhower meeting with the aliens and coming up with some sort of a treaty arrangement back in the 50s. And uh, I, I think that pro- I, I think you'd agree with me that that sounds fairly reasonable that something like that happened. Yes, it does. Yeah, and um, um, no, go ahead. The, you know, the research I was coming up with, I found out that like ninety-five percent of all the Americans have heard something about the UFOs, and out of those, fifty-seven percent believe that they are real. But the funny number is that 60% of everybody feels that there's a cover-up with the CIA and the Air Force when it comes to the subject of UFOs. And those are pretty high figures, I think, just to be a random, no, we're not covering this up. Um, when 60% of the American people feel there are, there's got to be something more there. I, well, I'm certainly one of that percentage. Oh, this is Kate Valentine, and I'm speaking with Dr. Stephen Cox. We're on 1160 WVNJ. I'd like to hear your comments or your thoughts, and you can post them right now on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. Well, where do you think it's all going to end? I mean, eventually, some secret like this has to start uh, just sort of leaking out a little bit, don't you think? Yeah, it has to come to a head at some time. I, hopefully it'll be within my lifetime. Um, I'm 56, so hopefully I'll be around to be able to see it. Um, but the government has to realize that, that people are more intelligent than what they're giving them credit for. And they're, they're and they're a lot better informed as well now, thanks to the internet. I mean, now when something happens, it's almost instantaneous. A lot of people know about it right away. Before it even gets on the news, they know about it. Yeah, yeah, I know. And uh, so, I, yeah, and then of course you have people like Stephen Gear and so on doing uh, these uh, disclosure projects, which you would. Th- do get a lot of uh, media attention, but it doesn't seem to make a dent in any of this secrecy. Yeah, uh, we're, we are working on trying to get that disclosure out there, but it's, any anytime you got to battle the government, it's a tough job to do. A lot of times it feels like you're just spinning your wheels, but um, there are little progresses here and there that are being done. Well, you know, one of the things that moves people is money, and uh, I think you make several good points in that chapter on secrecy, is that there have been uh, defrauding of the taxpayers, uh, that they paid for a breakthrough, which was a result of research that had been paid for by them already, and uh, that there may be some basic energy generation and propulsion tech technologies which have been withheld. So once that would leak out, I think, yeah, you would get quite an uprising. Yeah, um, I remember back, uh, like I said, in 56, in the early 60s, my dad had a Chevy, and they put 
put the wrong carburetor on it. My dad was getting outstanding miles even for today. He was getting like 60 miles to a gallon. Really? And when the car went in to be repaired for a tune-up, the mechanics caught the problem. And um, Delco took the computer right, or the uh, carburetor right away and put a regular one on there. And so he wasn't allowed to have that one. That was an experimental carburetor. And so they had that kind of technology in the 60s. And now we have the uh, capability of doing free energy that is being fought by the oil companies. And uh, the, the engineering is out there to be able to do stuff like this. You know, you're actually not the first person that I've heard that from. A fellow that I work with said the same thing about his father's car back in the 60s, that he was getting, like, incredible mileage on it. And then uh, one night, actually, somebody came and switched carburetors, and that was the end of that. So uh, maybe there was something to that. Well, there's enough smoke. There usually is, again, as I said, fire. But... um, I think you're right, though. I think when uh, people realize that they've been sort of hoodwinked, they will get a little bit more annoyed and maybe make a little bit more of a noise about it. Yeah. Uh, Plus, I I think just the general curiosity of uh, the general public concerning these things, I mean, people really want to start knowing what's happening. And I think maybe that, too, will start to break some of this secrecy loose. Right. Um Actually, the people of the United States and actually all governments, they're tired of the government basically taking advantage of them and not thinking that the people are smart enough to figure this stuff out. And they don't, the American people, including me, don't really feel that there's a reason to hide this stuff anymore, especially with the technology we have. Um, gee, we've got satellites at the edge, at the edge, of, edge of our uh, solar system now. Um, we have a good technology there that's put it to use and quit hiding this stuff. Well, that's true. Uh, Well, we need to take a short break right now. Uh, This is Kate Valentine. I'm speaking with Dr. Stephen Cox on 1160 WVNJ. He is the author of Military Response to UFO Activity. His book is published through the Schiffer Company and available through them. I would like to give that company credit as well because they have been extremely supportive of ufology and authors like Dr. Cox in in publishing their uh, works. If you have questions or comments or if you're in the military and you have information, please post all that right now on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to the Kate Valentine UFO Show on 1160 WVNJ. Our guest today, Dr. Stephen Cox, is the author of The Military Response to UFO Activity. We'd really like to hear from you out there, so please post your comments now on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. Uh, Steve, over the break, Earl wrote in to say he was wondering if you could provide any detail as to the Pentagon's UFO Working Group. Are they still meeting? Has any new information uh, about this group come to light? The Pentagon group, I haven't heard anything more coming out of them for, I'll say, about a year now. Um, Most of what I hear goes through, like, the uh, CIA, Air Force, um, in that area there. Um, I'm sure the Pentagon's involved with it. because they're that attached that close to the military, because most of them are military, and they're also connected to the president. So I'm sure there's information there that we'll never be able to get a hold of. Well, uh, he uh, also had an addendum to that question. He was wondering if there have been any very recent incidents where our military fired on a UFO or the occupants of a UFO. Do you know of any of those? Um, the last one that I heard that we fired upon was back in the 80s. Um, I haven't heard anything newer than that 
but I'm sure there are um, cases out there. But are these pilots willing to talk about it and jeopardize their careers? Most of these officers aren't going to talk about them until they're out of the Air Force. Well, you know, you were former military. Does that give you any access to um, information or insiders that perhaps we would not uh, be would not be available to someone that has never been in the military? No. Once I got done with the military, um, I became a civilian, and what the civilians are can get, I can get. That's about it. Um, I did have, you know, club top secret clearance while I was in the military because I worked in the supply field, and there's a lot there that uh, people weren't to know about. But once I left the service, all those security clearances left me. Okay. Well, uh, but it does seem as if um, that. Do you think that there might be some military preparation for possible? Uh, I, I guess not so much invasion, but alien contact. Uh, have Have you heard anything about that? I haven't heard much about it. I've heard still that they're still considering putting a um, trying to put a, a base on the moon for um, for contact and to um, intercept anything that's coming into to the the world here that we live in. Well, interestingly, I don't, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure what the plans are on that because everything I can get is off the Internet, and it's easy to put my personal opinions in there, and you get, when you get a lot of these comments in there, it's hard to break out which one's the truth and what uh, are people's opinions. Yeah. Uh, th- there was an interesting report from NASA where their Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter actually found uh, about 22% water on the surface of, uh, I forget which crater it was, but it's on the south pole of the moon. So it seems like there's, uh, and then the Grail satellite has been measuring the gravitational uh, surface of the moon. So it seems like there has been some preparation for possible bases or not so much colonies but bases and I guess would you think that that might be a good thing then um, my first opinion would be good for contact I don't think we should be trying to um, well the military's response is shoot ask questions later if you don't know what it is and I, I think that we need to really study a more advanced group than to sit back and think we're going to shoot at it and hurt it. Oh, and what you were talking about just a minute ago about fighting water on it, mm-hmm. it w- was on the moon, but it's not our moon. It's on Saturn's moon, Titan, oh. where they found the water. Yeah. No, actually it was on both. Uh, surprisingly enough, they did find it on ours. In Titan, they found, I think, uh, in under, uh, what was that, sort of like an underground ocean almost. Uh, This is Kate Valentine speaking with Dr. Stephen Cox on 1160 WVNJ. He is the author of Military Response to UFO Activity. Uh, Please contact us now with any questions or comments on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. But, you know, it seems like we're reaching out and uh, it, it surprises me that if we reach out, that people still think that other intelligent beings wouldn't reach out and start to explore their things. So do you feel that there, uh, let's, let's just assume for the sake of argument that these, there are intelligent occupants of these UFOs. Do you think they're here to visit or, um, you know, I, I don't really get any hint of an invasion. Do you? No, I, my personal opinion is if they could travel billions of light years to travel to our world, they could eliminate our world without us even seeing their any place in sight. Because um, they've got that capability to travel, their weapons technology has to be that much superior to ours. Um, I personally feel that they're here for exploration, just as if we went someplace else and we're exploring Mars, the moon, uh, now we're exploring Saturn. I think it's in the same type of uh, aspect of that. 
they've gone farther because they've had more years to travel to our world and learn more about it. Well, we had another comment that came in from Joe. Uh, He was wondering if you could elaborate or speculate on how our government has, for the most part, successfully hindered the ability of such technologically advanced races to make themselves known to humankind as a whole. Like, how, how are they, how do they keep this all quiet? What do you think? Again, given my personal opinion, I don't think that we're, the, if aliens are coming here, they're really hiding because they are being seen by people. Um, I think a lot of it is still the secrecy that uh, we're afraid of them. They don't really want to see us yet because they're still studying us. And our nature is to shoot then ask questions. That's the way the military thinks. Now, I'm thinking that has a lot to do with why they hide so much because their life's in jeopardy. If they do appear, we're going to try to grab them for scientific studies. Well, some abductees would say that they've already uh, taken some of us for scientific studies, and the uh, abductees that report this seem somewhat annoyed by that. Um, had you heard anything uh, in uh, in your, as a MUFON investigator, do you cover abductions at all? Yes, I do. I, I cover them pretty good. I've been studying up on the abductions. I am an abductee myself. Um, so I really... One thing I found out when I got into studying the abduction cases is investigators really do not know how to talk, or most investigators don't know how to talk to people that have been abducted. Um, Their biggest thing is they want answers now, just like something that has gone through in our life. We want answers. Same as the person that's been abducted. They want answers. They come to MUFON or one of the other uh, UFO groups they want answers because we're the ones that are supposed to know what's going on. The government's not going to tell me anything, so they try to uh, talk to us about it. And abduction cases are still really new. They're just starting to pop up now more and more frequently. Like I was abducted in this year, I was abducted here. So they're starting to come more to light now. And it's given us an opportunity to really study the pattern of it See what it's like for the abductees trying to get their answers. Yeah, David Jacobs made an interesting point. He said that uh, the abductees are almost like scouts. They go out and then they bring back information about the UFOs. And it's sort of an interesting perspective. Do you have any feelings uh, that you brought back information from your experience that uh, might be uh, helpful to others? Um. No, I I agree with Dr. Jacobs that um, they are scouts in in a way that they're um, getting the information and bringing it back. I don't, at this point, I haven't been able to do anything except to get draw conclusions that I feel is uh, appropriate for the decision. And it's still hard to it's still so new that I have a hard time telling people that's been abducted, this is probably what happened. And you don't want to hear probably, you want to know what really happened. Well, yeah, except some people just, uh, sometimes you have to start with the probably to get to the reality. And, uh, you know, I, I, I give you credit for at least doing that. We're going to have to take a short break. This is Kate Valentine. I'm speaking with Dr. Stephen Cox on 1160 WVNJ. He is the author of Military Response to UFO Activity. If you have questions or comments or if you are in the military and you have some information you'd like to share, Please post all that right now on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. We'll be right back after a short break. Hi, welcome back to the Kate Valentine UFO Show on 1160 WVNJ. Our guest today, Dr. Stephen Cox, is the author of The Military Response to UFO Activities. 
We'd like to hear from you. Uh, please post your comments or your thoughts on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. So, uh, Stephen, if I could ask you, um, I was surprised that you did mention that you were an abductee. Did you want to share that with the audience, or is that still a little bit too recent? Well, it's recent, but I really don't have any memory of it. I just happened behind my ear. I had a um, a mark that was in the shape of a triangle, uh, three little lines, and um, I went, my, of course, my doctors to military i'm a disabled vet so i went to the va and for years they were just saying it was just a uh, skin reaction and they decided to take a biopsy and when they took a biopsy it went from being two millimeters to where it almost engulfed the ear hmm. and that was in a period of about three weeks and they x-rayed it at the same time and found out there was something embedded in there that was about the size of a uh, human hair. There was two of them. And they said at one time it would look like two little lines, the next time it would look like a lollipop with a circle on top of it. Wow. And the only thing they could say is it felt like something was transmitting. Huh. And, uh, of course, they went in and removed it and never did see anything about it. Now my all my records, except for what I have, are all gone out of the VA. That's there's no there's no X rays available for me to go look at. Everything that's in my medical record is done. Holy but cow. Every time every time I go see the VA I always get a copy of my records of what happened at that day. So I still have my copies. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. What happened to that little device that they took out? I guess that disappeared too. Uh, that's just, uh, I can come up with it, talking to other doctors. There was something embedded in there when they did the uh, biopsy, irritated it. Um, it did cause skin cancer on me. Oh, they I'm think sorry. whatever it was dissolved and created a skin cancer. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. But uh, wow, that's some story. And so you have no memory, actually, of ever being... A, do you have any memories of sightings? Well, I, I uh, had like, my first sighting was when I was in the military. It was not a UFO, it was a USO. And um, that's what really got me into starting to investigate it, because the captain of my ship says we didn't see anything, and we're not supposed to talk about it. And if you tell a 17 year old that, and they're going to start checking things out on their own. And that's how I got into investigating UFOs, USOs. Well, what, what did you see? What came out of the water? Uh, well, actually, nothing came out of the water that I could see. When I saw, I stood on the pantail, I was on a carrier, mm -hmm. a USS Okinawa, it's a helicopter carrier. And I was standing on the pantail with a bunch of friends of mine, and we saw two lights coming off the horizon, heading at our boat. And from being on the horizon, the horizon would have been about 10 miles out and was flat. We could see these lights under the water coming at us. And in a period of about two minutes, they caught up to the boat, crossed underneath our ship, and in about a minute later was gone to the other side of the horizon. You can see it. And I know we don't have any submarines or anything that quick underwater. And so it was just instantly covered up, or just yeah. just put right onto the rug. Just yep, yep, yep. just move uh, along. Radar. Yeah. I had a friend of mine that worked radar. He did good, say they good. did see something on radar, but that's as far as he would go. Uh, but there was there was so there was in addition to siding, there was radar backup as well. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and we had another question that came in from Brittany, and she was wondering, what do you attribute to the focus on UFOs in the time period around 1947? Uh, she said, it goes on, with ancient aliens, etc., obviously there's been awareness of UFOs for quite some time. All the famous cases seem to be from that period, that time period, and not so much since, uh, although there are many sightings, but nothing like Brent Waters or Roswell, and nobody is writing books about recent cases. So she's wondering, is this due to the cover-up, such as the thing that you saw, 
or acceptance that they are here. So is it a cover-up or acceptance? What do you think? Um, I believe the cover-up is still there because we do have a lot of people uh, notice, not- noticing the black op helicopters. They will see these helicopters. You won't hear them. We have that technology now. We can actually go in silent. Um, Ten feet above you, you'll never hear it. Um, I am in the process of doing a book about modern sighting and everything in 2000, and there have been some pretty interesting cases. Uh, Most people that I've talked to, it was really hard to get them to talk about it because they were asked not to talk about it. So it's really hard to get people to talk about things when they fear for their life. Yeah, and you are ahead now of the uh, MUFON uh, New York chapter. Uh, so I guess that you would be in a position to know of any recent sightings in that area. So has anything really good come up? Or, you know, there's also a lot of military bases around uh, in the New York area. Are you seeing any military response to UFOs uh, like in upstate New York? Oh. I want to correct you first. I'm not the head of the MUFON chapter. I'm uh, just the chief investigator above me would oh. be the assistant state director, okay. which I'm assistant state director for the western New York. And we have another one that covers the eastern part of New York. And then we have our state director who covers the whole state. Okay. I, I have the ability of seeing every case that comes into the state because I have to assign the cases out. There's, there's my advantage. Uh just to give you an idea, from last year to this year, I'm up uh, 213% in new cases. Hmm. Um, so this year has been a, a big jump on sightings. I do see uh, the military, because I'm, I'm not that far from Niagara Falls Air Force Base. I do get to see them flying in the skies here quite a bit, and I've actually seen their... Uh, gunships that they've come out with a few years ago that will fly over and land. Well, wait, and who, whose gunships? Ours or the UFOs? Ours. Oh, okay. And, and they're impressive. <laughs> they very intimidating when you look at them. So it, I can understand a lot of people not wanting to talk about things when they're looking up at uh, something like the gunships we have and the black helicopters that you can't hear. Um, so. Well, yeah, that uh, that would be in definitely intimidating, especially if you don't know which government it is, like the United States government or the government within the governments, because I think a lot of these uh, military responses don't necessarily have to be from the U.S. government. Have, have you heard anything along those lines that possibly... There is another, uh, I don't know, how would you say, like a UFO type of uh, uh, response in the government against, uh, outside our government? No, I believe each, each um, country has their own group that studies the, air, or studies the UFOs. Here we believe it's the United States Air Force, but when you call them and talk to them, they say that, uh, no, they don't do that anymore call your, call your police department. Oh. Um, but CIA say they don't study it no more, but they still have a group of scientists that actually do keep an eye on the UFO phenomena. Well, uh, I'll t- this is Kate Valentine. I'm speaking with Dr. Stephen Cox, the author of the Military Response to UFO Activity. If you have questions, please Put them on our website right now, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. Uh, just to get back to your medical record, Dr. Cox, Drew wrote in to say, uh, what does the VA say to you about your missing records? Do they say, uh, that That would be interesting. What What do they say to you? They're, I, I know most of the people at the VA I go to, mm-hmm. and they're lost. They know I went in and had this uh, X-ray technician knows he X-rayed this, but there's nothing there, and huh. they're really lost for words. So, so they have no idea who came in and removed these records, right? Wow! And everything, everything nowadays, most of your medical departments are the same way. Uh, everything's on record. It's 
through the computers now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I want something from my uh, medical file, they just get on the computer, print it out, and here you go. So you don't really have to go into a VA hospital to do that. You just have to be part of the government where you have access to government records. And then you can get in there and start deleting whatever you want to be. Hmm. You don't want anybody to know about. But how would anyone even find out about it? I mean, you know, you go in and you have this problem and they take care of it. And then suddenly it comes to uh, some unknown person or person's attention and they delete these records. You wonder, don't you, how they even find out about it in the first place? The only reason I found out about it is because um, I wanted a copy of the x-rays put on a CD for me so I can look at them at home here. Mm-hmm. And when they went to pull the x-rays, they weren't there. But that's how we found out that the records were gone. Wow. Well, uh, getting back to also your abduction, John wrote in, he was wondering if you have ever had dreams related to your abduction. Nope, no dreams that I can really relate to the okay. abduction. Um, I am, like I say, do, I do investigation. I have referred people to um, regressive hypnosis. Um, at this point, I personally haven't gone through it because I'm at the point where, well, if I start to get dreams, then... Mm. or memories of it, then I'm supposed to know what's going on. But I don't have anything that's not haunting me. Let's just wait down the road and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, well, sometimes, uh, you know, I guess the uh, the memories are blocked for a good reason, too. Um, anyway, again, we need to take another quick commercial break. This is Kate Valentine. I'm talking to Dr. Stephen Cox. We're on 1160 WVNJ. He is the author of Military Response to UFO Activity. His book is published through the Schiffer, S-C-H-I-F-F-E-R company, and available through them. I would really like to give that company credit for all the encouragement they've given to ufology. If you have any questions or comments, please post them now on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to the Kate Valentine UFO Show on 1160 WVNJ. Our guest today is Dr. Stephen Cox. He is the author of Military Response to UFO Activity. We'd like to hear from you. Please post your comments on our website, AtlanticCoastUFOs.com. Um, you know, it occurred to me, Dr. Cox, too, over the break that there have been so many sightings that... Um, I, I don't know, again, this is from a human point of view. I would think if you were going to explore, you'd send a few. If you were going to invade, you'd send thousands. Uh, had you had any thoughts about that? Has the military prepared uh, against a possible invasion? Do you know? Or had you heard anything at all about that? In some of my investigations dating back um, early 2000s, supposedly we do have weapons capable of fighting um in space, hmm. um, one, uh, one, there was a big controversy up in Canada about it that they wanted the American people to know about this, and uh, that's about all the information I got. With the technology we have, I didn't, deep down I would say we do have the capability. Whether it would be effective, because if you read some of these stories, how they, um, the military actually shot at uh, the UFOs and didn't do any good, just penetrated them and went right in through, didn't slow them down, didn't damage their craft at all. Obviously, they have to have something that they think they could um, damage these ships in now. And I don't know what that would be. Well, again, I guess like everything else, that's secret and need to know. Um, but Correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it, it seems like uh, that there really is no apparent threat. I mean, you know, they certainly, as you said earlier, if they wanted to, they probably could uh, be pretty, uh, uh, you know, pretty destructive on this planet. But it seems like they're fairly peaceful. Does that uh, does that your impression as well? 
everything that I've, especially with a lot of the abductees you, you talk to, they are very peaceful. They're not here to hurt us. Uh, they just want to learn about us. Um, Staten Island, Long Island area out in New York, the islands out there, they are very popular with seeing multiple ships. Uh, some of them you can call them the mother ships. Uh, one big, large object in the sky with a lot of, um, like, uh, star-like objects going all around it. Myself, I've never been out there. It's 800 miles from me. I haven't gone out there and been able to see it. But I think we we get, like, one case somebody sends in on it, and that mothership is there with that many um, spacecrafts around it. Other people should be calling in and letting us know about it. But so far, it's only, like, one person seeing it and reporting it. Well, you know, I think that's one of the problems is that a lot of people don't know who to tell about their sightings either. And, uh, you know, certainly a lot of people are unaware of New Fork or MUFON, and they call the police, and a lot of police departments just sort of brush it off. Uh, uh, so what 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 would be your advice to someone that had seen some, uh, whatever, uh, a flying object that was unidentified? What do they do with that? Um my suggestion would be, first off, notify your police department. Mm-hmm. Um, be prepared to get laughed at. Um, right. I'm friends with a lot of police officers here in town. I live in a small town. Um, they laugh at me all the time when right. I come that I investigate UFOs. And uh, my area, I think that the whole time I've been here, we've only had two sightings. So there's not much to go on. So they don't think there's much there to believe in. The second step I would do is get on the computer and notify one of your um, UFO investigating companies like MUFON or any of the other ones that you've heard about. Get on and have somebody try to send out investigators and talk to you about it. Well, I I think what will... I think certainly the media helps people become more aware of this and how to report it. Uh, there's certainly a new show on uh, National Geographic, Hunting UF or Chasing UFOs. It starts this evening, the premiere show. Uh, Jamie Foxx had been on this show a while back, and he did a great video. Uh, it was, I Know What I Saw. And this is the problem. I mean, you're right. You'll call up the police department, and you get a chuckle. But you know what you saw, and it wasn't your imagination. And so it, other than MUFON and so on, how do people, um, you know, sort of relate to their family and friends when they say, wow, I saw a UFO last night? <laughs> well, my mom and dad knows that I uh, investigate. I They know about MUFON and everything, but they still laugh at me because they're up in their 80s. To them, you keep your stuff quiet. You don't talk about it. People think you're, you're crazy. And if it hasn't been for some of these shows like UFO Hunter, Chasing UFOs, people wouldn't talk about it. Now it's getting more out there. That it's more common than people realize. They're more apt to talk about it. Uh, yeah, I think it helps a lot. I really do. And uh, it's also, it's interesting. I know if I start talking about this at work I get a lot of rolled eyes and giggles and stuff but on the other hand I also get some really interesting questions and they'll say uh, one of the most common one is do you really think these things exist and uh, you know it's if you haven't seen it it's hard to believe in it and but uh, you're pretty positive that they're there yep yeah I, I, yeah. I really do part of me being a minister um, I walk outside, I look up at the skies, and with all them stars up there, it's I can't think how anyone would think that we're alone with all them planets up there. But I can't control what other people think, and I don't try to uh, get people convinced that what I'm saying is true. I, I like everybody to make their own conclusions. That's one of the reasons I did the book, is I put it to end of almost every chapter. It was up to you to conclude how you want this to, to be. Well, you also quote a lot of the astronauts as well, and um, especially Gordon Cooper, who had a lot of stuff to say. 
And uh, Gordon Cooper, y- your last sentence in uh, on the chapter on him is, uh, Gordon Cooper said, it's time for us to prepare the people of this planet to become a part of the galactic community. They are waiting for us to stop trying to kill each other before they invite us to join the community and then I guess start killing them as well. I, I, do you think that that seems to be part of it, that uh, they're just waiting for humanity to grow up a little bit? My personal feeling, yes. Um, how can anybody want a race like ours that is so violent to join their race, uh, knowing that we may try to fight them? And if we were more peaceful, they'd say, come on in and people start sharing more of their technology. Well, especially if that uh, all that 1947 back engineering were true, then they would see that we got a hold of their technology and immediately used it in the various war engines that we have. So maybe that's another reason they stopped sharing. What do you think? Correct. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Wow. That's that's quite a thought, though, that there are uh, a lot of people out. It's It's sort of a humbling thought, don't you think, that they're waiting for us to grow up and... You know, join the party. Yep. Yeah. Uh, wow. Like, do you think as parents, though, it's the same thing you do with your kids? You wait for them to grow up before you start showing them more things and mm-hmm. teaching them more things. They've got to go through certain stages of life. Yeah. And I think that's what they're watching is our stages. Yeah. Do you, Do you think they're getting anxious at all? You think they're saying, "Come on, let's get going here." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, watching you for all these years. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do you think instead of, like, throwing technology down, they might throw down some breakthroughs in sociology? Uh, yeah, breakthroughs in uh, sociology, I think I'd love to see them throw some breakthroughs down in medicine. Yeah, that um, would be good. That would be good. Um, well, I think we're getting toward the end of the show, but we had a quick question that came in from Dorian. He said, many military men have come forward confirming sightings, and you would think that this would have been a bigger deal. I can't believe in all this time police officers would still laugh and uh, be a little bit ignorant about this. But I think, uh, you know, uh, until you've actually seen one, I, I think it's difficult to believe in them. Yep, I, I agree. It's a lot of your police officers here haven't seen them, so to them they're just airplanes or some. Yeah. They'll try to make the um, excuse of what they are. And instead of opening their mind and saying, well, there's a possibility, it could be this, but try to give me some kind of a proof. Well, also it's dangerous for their career, too. I mean, if they're known as a police officer that's going out looking for UFOs, uh, I'm sure the other officers will sort of have a good chuckle at their expense. Yeah, that's just like the Air Force and the military members not really coming forward until they get out of the service. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't want to jeopardize their careers. Yeah, it's, it, it can be a career killer, that's for certain. Well, this hour always seems to go by so quickly. Uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Um, how's the best way for our audience to get a copy of your book, Military Response to UFO Activity? Most of your bookstores are selling them, uh, Barnes and Nobles and all that. Uh, easiest way people have been told me they can get it is going on Amazon.com. Okay, that that seems to be the best way. Well, thank you again. Uh, can, I, I, can I clarify one thing, sure. though, about my uh, abduction? Sure. Um, reason I, one of the reasons why I didn't really want to go into hip, uh, hypnosis myth is I'm not sure if it was actually an alien abduction or was this implant done by our government or oh. our government. Okay. So I haven't really pursued that. that okay. All right. Well, thanks again. Uh, of course, mainly thank the audience for listening. And in addition to our still free podcast, you can also hear us on YouTube, UFO Kate. That's me. So sign up both the podcast, YouTube, help us keep our numbers up. Have a great weekend. Have a great 4th of July. See you next Friday at 1. Until then, remember, keep your eye on the sky. See ya.